Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good evening. Welcome to your Alaska weather. I'm meteorologist Perry Daney. This is your weather for August 31st, 2017. As always, you can follow us on weather.gov uh, forward slash Alaska. Starting off with a satellite, uh, put it into a loop here. Uh, we have a low uh, occluded low pressure system sitting over the Anchorage Bowl here as it moves farther uh, north here. Plenty of moisture that's streaming uh, from the Gulf all the way up into the uh, northern coastal communities and the uh, in central interior. Along the uh, southeast panhandle, you can have a warm front extending along the southeast panhandle with uh, onshore flow, plenty of moisture be being uh, pushed into there. All the way south of east of Hadaguay, you have high pressure dominating, uh, so you got clear skies farther south in those regions. Otherwise, uh, uh, farther north, uh, we have uh, high pressure dominating over the Beaufort Sea. Uh, so with that so easterly flow, so you're getting some uh, moisture coming off there. Otherwise, there's a weak stationary front that's uh, uh, along the uh, eastern Brooks Range, extending over into the uh, British Columbia region, uh, Yukon Territory, I should say. And with that, you're going to have uh, uh, some uh, scattered showers with that. Otherwise, this moisture uh, with this occluded system over the Anchorage region here, it continues to move uh, westward into the uh, Southwest Territory, as well as all the way farther west into Nome region. Otherwise, uh, along the western Aleutians, you have a two, uh, a one low pressure system that's uh, going to be approaching the uh, just south of Shemya there uh, the, tonight and tomorrow. Otherwise, another low pressure system that you can't see yet, but uh, you have the warm front extending down through the uh, eastern uh, Kamchatka Peninsula. So with that, these two systems will move farther east. As you can see, plenty of moisture covering the, the western uh, Aleutians, the central Aleutians, as well as the, the Bering. And put it in the loop again. Again, you're going to, on the back side, you have this northerly flow, a northwest flow, so plenty of a cooler air starting to filter in down uh, through the northern barren here. Uh, otherwise, along the, the central Aleutians and the uh, eastern Aleutians, you will have uh, some uh, scattered showers with that, with that northwesterly flow there. Again, uh, Farther north, uh, along the uh, Alaska Range here, we have a weak low pressure system as well. Uh, they'll continue to move to produce some uh, scattered showers. Uh, but otherwise, you can have mostly cloud cover again uh, along the uh, Brooks Range and farther north along the Arctic coastline. Uh, today's uh, weather, uh, we have that occluded low pressure system that's sitting uh, just west uh, in the lower Cuscoan Valley region uh, with an occluded front extending through the uh, south central region. And then you have a cold front extending farther south through the uh, southern portions of the Gulf into the North Pacific. And again, that warm front I mentioned before draped through the southeast Panhale coastline. So continued onshore flow for the southeast and northern coastal communities. So plenty of light rain that will continue through uh, this afternoon going into the evening. Uh, farther north, Again, that weak stationary front, cooler temperatures, so you got a wintry mix, uh, light snow over the Arctic coastline. And just south uh, of the, uh, actually north of the Brooks Range, you're going to have that wintry mix there. Otherwise, through the Bering Strait, uh, you're going to have a little slightly warmer temperatures there, so you're going to have a light rain in those regions extending over to the Fairbanks region. Otherwise, the, the Bering, predominantly all northerly flow here, you're going to have scattered showers with that. Um, and as mentioned before, you have a 992 millibar low uh, just coming off the uh, Kamchatka Peninsula and a 1,009 millibar low at just south of the Rat Islands. These two systems will continue to move eastward and merge later by Saturday. And tonight's forecast, uh, this occluded system here, this low pressure system will continue to sit and fill. Uh, with that, you have a trough extending down through the, uh, all the way down through the Kodiak region into the, just south of the eastern Aleutians. So with that, some scattered showers. Uh, otherwise, out ahead is a occluded front uh, just um, east of the uh, uh, Brooks, not Brooks Range, but Alaska Range, you're going to have a chance for isolated thunderstorms this evening. Again, this warm front will continue to push uh, on land here over the southeast panhandle with that continued light rain. 
Otherwise, they're going to have on the back side is low pressure system, a weak trough that's going to swing through. With that, you'll have some scattered showers with it. Along the Arctic coastline, a wintery mix. Again, the high pressure is sitting farther north over the Beaufort Sea, bringing cooler air along the, the Arctic coastline. So that's why you have the, the snow showers in those regions there. Otherwise, uh, included a uh, low pressure system coming off the eastern uh, Kamchatka Peninsula will continue to move uh, eastward, as well as a low pressure system that's moving eastward just south of the, the western Aleutians here. Uh, so with that, again, these two systems will eventually merge into one major system by Saturday. You'll see that later. Uh, Friday's forecast, here's those two systems, a weak low pressure system uh, sitting in the central bearing, as well as just south of the central uh, chain, you're going to have that other weak low pressure system. So with that, uh, scattered rain showers with that. Uh, otherwise, a weak low pressure system moves into the uh, bearing straight. So with that, uh, you're going to have a, a station in front extending along the arc. Uh, the Brooks Range extending eastward with that some light rain and again a wintery mix along from Barrow northward again with the cooler air with the high pressure sitting over the Beaufort Sea. And then in the southeast, uh, you're going to have a continued uh, light onshore uh, southwesterly flow. So continued marine layer stratus and some light rain. Otherwise, you're going to have a weak low just pushing off along the Alaska Range, the eastern portion of it. So with that in that trough should be enough to kick off some isolated thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. And then for Saturday, as those two systems moved, as I mentioned, they become uh, they phase in and become a 978 middle bar occluded low pressure system just south of the eastern Aleutians. So with that, a, a pretty a tight uh, pressure gradient here. Uh, you're going to have strong southeasterly winds here uh, along the Alaska Peninsula and eastern. Uh, uh, Aleutians there. And then they'll, uh, plenty of uh, uh, moisture being pumped in all the way up. It'll move uh, transport all the way into the southwest as well up to Seward Peninsula. So plenty of light rain and uh, plenty of moisture going to bring into those regions there. Uh, for the north, farther north, you have the high pressure still sitting over the Beaufort Sea. Continued wintery mix with the cooler temperatures there. Otherwise, sitting over the eastern Siberian, you have the next low pressure system moving eastward. With that, a warm front extended over uh, the, west, uh, the eastern Siberian region. So with that, uh, south uh, westerly flow and some light rain with that. The southeast panhandle, you have a high pressure dominating, uh, basically from uh, south of Sitka all the way through High Hatagwai, uh, mostly clear skies there and nice sunny days there. For Saturday, uh, but from Yakutat uh, westward to the northern coastal communities, you're going to have some light rain again with this moisture that's being pumped up from the south with this southerly flow. You'll see with the jet stream being south to north of that direction for Saturday. And then for uh, temperatures as of 2 p.m., starting off the southeast, predominantly all they were all in the southeast panhandle, predominantly all in the mid 50s. I uh, did have 58 at Gustavus, uh, otherwise 57 at Yakutat, and uh, Klowak coming in at 55. And then for the south central region, uh, pretty much all in the uh, 50s to uh, almost 60 there, 59 at uh, Glen Allen. Uh, otherwise, you had uh, uh, 50 at uh, Valdez and you had 54 at Anchorage today. Uh, Palmer coming in at 56 and Talkeetna at 56 as well. Uh, as you go farther north, uh, just north Alaska range here, you had uh, four, 62 at uh, Fort Greeley and 63 uh, coming in at uh, Fairbanks. Uh, Eagle Airport came in at 65. And then farther north, uh, as of 2 p.m., your temperatures probably all, again, with an easterly flow and cooler air coming off the, the Beaufort Sea, you have te the temperature all in the uh, mid-30s to upper 30s. 39 was a high there at uh, Wainwright. And then you just go along the, the northwest coastline, you had 41 at Point Hope, and 42 as you get down to uh, Wales, and <clears throat> 44 at Gamble. And then along the chain, uh, as you can see, uh, the 51, uh, for uh, King Salmon. And then as you go along, uh, you had uh, Pilot Point coming at 48, Nelson McGloon at 50, uh, Sand Point and Cold Bay at 51, Dutch coming at 52, and the high at 54 there at uh, Adiac, uh, actually eight, Atka, and then 48 at uh, Adiac. Otherwise, the, the uh, Shemia was coming in at 48, as well as for St. Paul and St. George. Uh, tonight's low temperatures, uh, not surprising, the coolest temperature is going to be along the uh, northern slope regions and Arctic coastline, again with the easterly flow and the high pressure dominating. So you're going to see temperatures predominantly all in the 30s, uh, 26 at uh, 
and Anaktuvik. Uh, otherwise, uh, for the southeast, Panhandle, uh, you're primarily all in the lower 50s, uh, 53 at Clo uh, Cloac, and then 50 at Yakutat, and then uh, primarily all in the mid 40s to upper 40s uh, as you get farther south down the Kenai uh, with Homer coming in at 49. Uh, otherwise, along the eastern Aleutians and the chain here um, in Alaska Peninsula, you are primarily all the, the uh, lower 40s to mid 40s in that region. Uh, slightly, slightly modified, a little bit higher as you get out to Adiac at 46 and Attica at 40, 48. Uh, the Purple also a little cooler at 43. And of course, Shemia, don't forget that they're 47 all the way out in the western Aleutians. Uh, tomorrow's high pressure, not surprising, is going to be along the uh, Excuse me, just north of the Alaska range here. We're probably all in the 66 range here, mid 60s here today. Uh, 66 at Eagle uh, Airport, 66 uh, at Fairbanks. Uh, the southeast uh, Panhandle, probably all in, in the mid uh, uh, 50s and 60s coming in there at Sitka. And then for our coastline, your tomorrow's high temperatures are going to be uh, pretty much in the upper 30s to the lower 40s. Uh, a little slightly warmer there at Point Hope at 44. And then uh, um, primarily all 50s, lower 50s there along the, the eastern Aleutians all the way out to the western uh, to Shemya at 54. Uh, tomorrow's fly, flying weather, and not surprising, IFR to marginal VFR, again with these two systems, the one system coming off the eastern Kamchatka Peninsula, and then uh, another system approaching just south of Shemya. So with that, you're going to have uh, the worst conditions. Always, the rest of the northerly flow, uh, you're going to have uh, with the uh, marginal VFR conditions with that. Otherwise, uh, the worst condition is going to be along the, the north slope here and just uh, south of Barrel with uh, uh, IFR to marginal VFR conditions, again, with this high pressure dominating up there in easterly flow. Uh, along the Alaska Peninsula, actually Alaska Range and the Lucian Range, you're going to have marginal to VFR conditions, the worst conditions along the Alaska Range. Otherwise, uh, for the uh, east of Anchorage, uh, going through Portage, Prince William Sound, extending all the, way, all the way over to Southeast Panhandle, you're going to have marginal VFR conditions, except for uh, the Lynn Canal and near uh, the Dixon entrance there, you're going to have IFR conditions for tomorrow morning. Then for tomorrow's afternoon, uh, afternoon your, your IFR marginal conditions are going to continue to move eastward with that system as those two systems move eastward and merge into one later by uh, Saturday. But you're going to have a sliver of IFR conditions and marginal over the Perviloffs there. Otherwise, pretty much the southwest Seward Peninsula all the way up to the Barrel and along the Brooks Range, you're going to have marginal VFR conditions. Uh, and along the eastern... Um, Alaska range, you will have afternoon isolated thunderstorms. Otherwise, along the northern coast, uh, coastal communities and southeast panhandle, for the most part, marginal VFR conditions and a sliver of marginal VFR along uh, the uh, Alaska range for tomorrow afternoon. Uh, tomorrow's past conditions, uh, Anaktuvik, IFR to marginal VFR conditions, Anatigan, marginal VFR condition, and then Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR to MVFR, and then Rainy, IFR to MVFR. Windy, marginal VFR to VFR. And then Isabel, marginal VFR to VFR. And then Mentasca, VFR. Tanita, marginal VFR. Portage, marginal VFR. And then Chillicook and White, IFR to marginal, I mean to VFR conditions. And then tomorrow morning's freezing levels. Not surprising, again, with this uh, warmer temperature just south of the uh, western Lucians, you're going to have freezing levels of 8 to 14,000. A little cooler as you go farther north, again, with that cooler air and northerly flow. So 2,000 feet, predominantly in the northern bearing, extending all the way up along the Arctic coastline, anywhere from two to 4,000, slightly higher, higher as you go towards east of Dead Horse. Otherwise, with the high pressure dominating just south of Hadaguay, with the ridge extending up along the southeast panhandle, that's why you have the higher freezing levels here, anywhere from 12,000 to 8,000, and they start lowering as you get to the uh, northern coastal communities. Uh, otherwise, over the mountains and along the Brooks Range, you will have some freezing levels there at the surface. And then tomorrow's uh, icing, you'll have a pretty much light to occasional widespread moderate with the system as it moves eastward through the western uh, and central uh, bearing. And then uh, above 5,000 and above 6,000 through the Pervilos and extending along from cold way south into the uh, North Pacific. So with that, you'll have light to occasional widespread moderate. The uh, southeast and northern coastal communities, uh, again, above 5,000 for the uh, Anchorage Bowl and the Copper River Basin, and above 8,000 for the southeast panhandle with the higher freezing levels, again, with the high pressure ridge in that region there, some of the moisture filtering over that ridge that way. Otherwise, the southwest, and going farther north into the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline, above 4,000, again, with the lower freezing levels along the Arctic coastline. And then tomorrow's jet stream. Um, 
strong subtropical jet stream, westerly flow, 170 knots, 130. Then it transitions as it digs south into the base of the long wave trough and transitions to southerly 130. So here's your long wave trough sitting in that region there. Uh, then it transitions to uh, southwest as it goes in the lower 48. Otherwise, there is a uh, finger of a northerly jet over the uh, Siberian region and a finger, a westerly jet just entering the southwest territory. Uh, tomorrow's 9,000 foot winds. You got these double barrel lows. Uh, you have 10 to 15 knots around these cyclonic flow uh, around these low uh, here. On the, around the two lows. On the back side, northwesterly winds, uh, northeasterly 20 to 25 knots. And then down the base, you're gonna have a south, uh, actually northwest uh, 25 to 40 knots, slightly stronger as you get south of the, the uh, western Aleutians. And then on the, the front side, southwesterly flow predominantly 20 to 25 knots, and then it transitions to all westerly flow, zonal flow as you get a, across the, the southeast panhandle and it tapers on down to 15 to 20 there near Hadaguay. Slightly stronger, 35 south of uh, Hadaguay there. And tomorrow's 3,000 foot winds. Again, these double barrel lows over right here. Uh, the weaker one is sitting over the, the Bering Strait, so five to 10 knots around this uh, low pressure system. And then 10 to 20 around the one that's a little stronger over the uh, lower central uh, Bering region. Otherwise, again, on the backside, slightly weaker, 10, 10 knots northeastly flow. And then you pick up uh, northwesterly 30 knots to 40 knots uh, as you go far, farther south of the western Aleutians. And then on the front side, again, the southwesterly flow then it goes over the ridge here and then transitions to weak 10 knots and then southwesterly flow 15 to 25 knots. And you got a weak low pressure system just sitting uh, north of Yakutat region, again, five to 10 knots around there, as well as a, a weak low pressure system, uh, five to 10 knots uh, around uh, just east of the uh, Beaufort Sea there. Otherwise, you got a finger going through the central, Lush, central uh, um, uh, Brooks Range near Anaktuvik that suddenly flow 15 knots and transitions to more uh, easterly flow as you moves on off into the uh, uh, Chuck G. C. And then tomorrow's turbulence, you're going to have below 6,000, a light to occasional moderate in the, from basically from Murat Islands. It extends up into the, into the uh, uh, central bearing. And then over the, uh, you're going to have light uh, um, chance of some isolated thunderstorms over the uh, Alaska Range on the eastern side, and that's for tomorrow. With that, we'll be back with your Marines after this. stars of Pegasus. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. If you're a fan of horses and peculiar star names, have we got a show for you. That's right, James. At this time of year, Pegasus, the winged horse, appears in the east shortly after sunset. And it has some amazing stars with cool names. Let's show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for an hour after sunset facing east. Pegasus, the winged horse, is easy to find. Simply look for four bright stars that form a large square, just above the eastern horizon. That square is an asterism that we call the Great Square of Pegasus. If you've watched our show for a while, you probably noticed that some of the stars in the sky have very interesting names. That's because many of the stars were named by Persian astronomers thousands of years ago. When astronomers of that time chose to name the stars, they often liked to name them after the body part they represented in the constellation. The stars that make up the Great Square of Pegasus, starting with the one highest above the horizon and moving counterclockwise, are Shi'at, Alpharats, Algenib, and Markab. Shi'at, whose name in Arabic means the leg, is a red giant star 196 light years from Earth, and it's approximately 1,500 times bright as our sun. Alpharats, which means navel of the horse, is 97 light years away from us and is also the brightest star in the neighboring constellation Andromeda. The next star is Algenib. It's 390 light years away, and its name means the flank. The last of the four stars in the square is Markab. Its name means the saddle of the horse, and it's a white subgiant star. It's exhausted the hydrogen in its core and expanded to almost five times the diameter of our almost one million mile wide sun. The stars that branch out from Shi'at moving upward form the legs of Pegasus. The star directly above Shi'at is a binary star system named Matar. Matar's name is derived from an Arabic phrase meaning lucky star of rain. Its bare designation is Eta Pegasi, and it's 165 light years away. 
Matara is interesting because its primary star is a yellow giant 18 times the diameter of our sun with a rotation rate of 818 days. Its companion star is a yellow white star which orbits every 813 days. And believe it or not, the US Navy cargo ship USS Matara was named after this star. It was responsible for delivering troops, goods and equipment during World War II and was built in Jacksonville, Florida. Speaking of lucky, one of the stars in Pegasus's other leg is just to the upper right from Shiat. Its name is Saddlebari. Its name means lucky star of the splendid one, and it's a yellow giant star 106 light years away. Moving toward the head of Pegasus, we have the star Enif, which marks his nose. Enif is 690 light years away and is a supergiant star, 12 times the mass and 185 times the diameter of our sun. The next star is Behem, also known as Theta Pegasi. I like to think of it as the eye of Pegasus. Its name is derived from an Arabic phrase meaning lucky stars of the young beasts and is over 97 light years away. The last star we'll talk about is the one just above Markab. Its traditional name is Homam and it's approximately 204 light years away. I like the meaning of the traditional name of Homam, which means man of high spirit or lucky star of high minded. Pegasus sure has a lot of lucky stars. I wonder how it would fare in the Kentucky Derby. Well, since he has wings, he might be disqualified for having an unfair advantage. Hmm, that's not very lucky, is it? Nope. Hmm. Well, there you have it. Nine stars with very cool names for you to enjoy with your family during autumn nights. Shiat, Alpharat, Algenid, and Markab in the square. And Enif, Biham, and Homam in the head and neck with Matar and Sadalbari in the legs. And it's all there waiting for you when you keep looking, looking up. Well, welcome back. This is your sea ice analysis uh, for today as of August 31st. Uh, pretty much uh, the uh, Chukchi Sea and the uh, Beaufort Sea pretty much open a lot of open waters there. Farther north you do have the uh, sea, pack, uh, sea ice there. Uh, they'll continue to uh, melt and, and stay pretty much stationary as well as one that's north of Kaktuvik here. But still pretty much a lot of open waters there. Uh, Friday's marine forecast for the southeast. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, you're going to have onshore flow, uh, southwesterly 15 knots on outside waters, uh, wave heights predominantly, predominantly all 8 feet. And then the inside water is going to have southerly flow 15 knots and the wave heights are going to be 3 feet. Then for Saturday, uh, you're going to have on the outside waters, on um, northwesterly flow south of Sitka 10 knots and then westerly as you go north of Sitka, all the way southerly uh, 10 knots there as you get towards Yakutat and west towards uh, Cordova. The uh, inside waters, you're going to have a southerly, southeasterly flow as southerly as you get to Lynn Canal, except for towards the Dixon entrance, you're going to have a, a northwesterly at 10 knots. And then Friday, marine forecast for the south central, uh, primarily from uh, on the uh, Prince William Sound, extending all the way down to the eastern Kenai, you're going to have a northeast 10 knots, and then well, actually southeast, and then southwesterly 15 knots. And then coming out of the Shelikoff Strait and the Barrent Islands, you're going to have uh, westerly 15 knots, 20 knots. And then going up to the Cook Inlet, you're going to have uh, southwesterly 20 knots, subtly as you get to the northern Cook Inlet at 15. And then your wave heights, again, will be 3 to 5 feet. The, Highest wave heights are going to be 7 to 8 feet uh, there just north of the Kodiak Island. And then for Saturday's marine forecast, uh, you're going to have uh, small craft winds uh, southeastly there, uh, south of Seward, all extending into the Varian Islands uh, region there. And the lower uh, uh, Cook Inlet, you're going to have a southeasterly uh, 20 knots. And then uh, easterly 10 knots as you go into the northern Cook Inlet. Uh, Prince William Island will be easterly at 15. Uh, again, your wave heights are going to be strongest along east of the, along, along, along the eastern Kenai and extending into the, the uh, Barren Islands region there. Uh, Friday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island. Uh, pretty much on the Bering side, you're going to have uh, westerly knots, 15 knots, uh, southeasterly there near uh, Cold Bay. Otherwise, uh, westerly on the, on the Pacific side, uh, 15 to 20 knots. Slightly stronger near Kodiak on the east side of the island, you're going to have marine, um, uh, 
small craft winds at 25 knots and the wave heights at 8 feet. Otherwise, most of the wave heights are 6 to 5 feet on the Bering and the Pacific side. And then Saturday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island. Again, you, you're going to see uh, 45 knots gale force winds here, again with that occluded system that's going to build into the uh, just south of the chain there. Uh, on the, on the Bering side, you'll have slightly weaker winds southeasterly, but they'll be northeasterly uh, 35 knots as you get near Cold Bay. Otherwise, uh, again, gale force winds uh, there just south of Kodiak. Uh, on the east side of the island, you'll have southerly 40 knots. And then on the southern end of the island, you'll have easterly 40 knots. And then through the Shelikoff Strait, you'll have southeast 30 knots. And then Friday's marine forecast, uh, I'll get off the screen here. That's for the uh, Aleutian chain. Pretty much uh, from Shemya all the way out, you're going to have southwesterly flow, 20 knots, and then uh, southwesterly, 15 to 20 knots along there to, till Dutch there. Uh, wave heights, 5 to 7 feet. And then Saturday for your marine forecast, uh, Primarily all northerly winds, 25, 30 knots, uh, small craft, but they do ramp up as you get uh, farther east along the uh, eastern peninsula there and with the strong cool low pressure system there just sitting south of Dutch. So with that, you're going to have gale force winds, 35 to 40 knots, and look for uh, gusty winds coming out of bays and passes there from Nikolsky eastward. And then Saturday's, uh, Friday's marine forecast for the western, you're going to have uh, light winds, 15 knots, uh, southerly 15 knots there near the Pribilofs. And then for Saturday, uh, they're going to switch around again on, as that low pressure system moves along the chain. It's going to be uh, easterly, then northerly there from uh, St. Paul and St. George, and then easterly coming off there the Bering Strait. And then for Friday for the Marines forecast, probably all easterly with a high pressure dominant, 20 knots, and then transitions to more northeasterly, 25 there near Point Hope, and weakens to, through the Bering Strait, 15, 15 uh, northeasterly at 15. And then Saturday, uh, primarily all east, it's, it's diminishing though, but it does switch around to southerly there through the Bering Strait, extending up through the lower uh, Chukchi Sea at 15 knots. And then tonight's forecast, again, the occluded low pressure system sitting in the southwest uh, region there, the occluded front extending down to the southeast. Uh, with that, you're going to have some isolated thunderstorms along the eastern and Alaska range, and a weak trough extending through the Alaska Peninsula. Look for scattered showers through there. Uh, otherwise, through the Bering, you're going to have a weak trough pushing through with that scattered showers in those regions there. In the southeast, high pressure dummy. With that, you have a good day. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.